everybody, and welcome to Around Town with the Beverly Rotary Club. We do this as a monthly program to share with you some of the wonderful things that the Beverly Rotary Club does for local nonprofits and for people in need. My name is Al Temkin. I'm going to share, uh, I'm going to co-host the program today, and uh, along with Mike Harrington, who's here to say hello. Mike. Hi, everybody. Mike Harrington here. Welcome to our show. It's great to see you all. Um, I'd like to introduce our guest here today. Our guest is a very, very creative and talented man. Uh, Brian Murphy is the owner of Brian Murphy Design. He lives here in Beverly with his family, and uh, he's also the past president of the Beverly Rotary Club. So, Brian, welcome to the show. Well, uh, Alan, Mike, welcome and, uh, to yourselves, and uh, thanks for having me on the show. I know it was a slow news week, so that's why I'm here, so that's <laughs> fine. Hey, well, tell you what, Brian, we're going to cover a lot of ground here today. You're an interesting man, and uh, there's a lot of things we'd like to ask you about. But before we get into your career and, and maybe your connection to Rotary, um, would you mind telling us a little bit about, you know, what the early the early is where you grew up and that type of stuff? Sure. Well, uh, I'm not a native Beverly guy. Uh, I was born in New Haven, Connecticut, and grew up in uh, Connecticut uh, my whole life, and um, or up till 18 at least. Uh, I'm the third of six boys that my uh, parents had. I uh, asked my mother to stop at me and she just wouldn't. She just kept going. She said, no, no, I want more. That's, that's what it is. So uh, yeah, so we grew up there. Again, it was a pretty chaotic home because there were six boys running around. And I think my uh, parents' plan was get them outside, let them run around, get them tired. So that, that's, uh, that was my early life. Always works. It sure <laughs> does. Let the boys run. <laughs> and obviously, um, you know, over the years, you've developed an appreciation and talent for art. Tell us a little bit about that. How old were you when you first maybe started getting interest in, in art and maybe dabbling in different types of things? Well, I, I, I don't know when I actually started doing art, but I do know uh, the first time I had an art critic. Uh, and that was, uh, I think, fifth or sixth grade. The principal of my elementary school didn't like my, uh, how should I say, rudimentary uh, 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 pictures of, of women and men drawn on the table without clothes on. So, <laughs> so, uh, so you've been a troublemaker for a long time. Okay. Well, no, I was just trying to express my, uh, my creativity. So uh, uh, my friends were at the table, they're all kind of laughing, trying to see what I was trying to figure out. And then all of a sudden they stopped laughing and I turned around and the principal was right behind me. So uh, that was it. That was my first art critic. Oh my Lesson goodness. Learned. So obviously you went to school for art. Can you tell us a little bit about your art education? Sure, I, I went to uh, RISD. The formal name is Rhode Island School of Design in Providence, uh, but uh, those in the know know it as RISD. And uh, it was a great experience for me. I met my wife Brenda there, so it did pay off in multiple ways. Uh, so uh, that's what it is, but it was a great uh, experience for me. It was a complete immersion into art. Uh, we didn't have a whole lot of uh, science classes and math classes. We did have to take some uh, English and literature kind of things, but it was art five days a week and then plenty of homework to do artwork. So, but it was a good thing. And, and actually there's a, a fairly large group of RISD grads living right here in Beverly. I, we probably know about 10. Uh, wow. and it's a small school. When I was there, I think they just had over maybe a thousand people in the school. That's the whole school. So. How about after that, Murph? Which, so you, you went through you went through the schooling. You got your art degree. Uh, you met Brenda. Uh, what what where'd you go and what'd you do after college? Well, after uh, school, uh, New York City was mecca for many of us uh, artists that graduated. So I moved down to New York City, and uh, basically um, I started out as a, a freelance artist, uh, working for a couple different ad, uh, advertising agencies. In fact, uh, the first one I worked on was actually on Madison Avenue. Uh, so like the show Mad Men kind of lived that a little bit back in the uh, 80s. And uh, it was a great experience, uh, you know, uh, you know, living in and we lived right in New York City and uh, great experience in the 80s. It was a lot of fun. Uh, we were young, naive, just having fun and working. And, and that's what it was. It was a, it was a great time to to be down there. So that's a great city. That's for sure. So how did you go from from. Uh, you know, the, the life in the big city life in New York City to Beverly? Well, uh, we, at some point, 
uh, we thought, uh, let's start a family. And we didn't think uh, New York City was the place to do that. We both grew up with uh, a fairly large backyards and running around with trees and all those kind of things and uh, uh, not dodging, uh, you know, taxi cabs. So we said, hey, let's, uh, let's start looking into places. So we're actually looking anywhere around the country uh, that maybe, you know, artists that, uh, you know, could survive. And uh, my roommate from college happened to live in Beverly. And he said, hey, there's an apartment that's available here. You guys want to think about coming up here? So we came up here. Uh, we took a look at the apartment. The rent was half the price we were already paying in New York with five extra rooms. And it was only about a five minute walk to the beach. So we're like, this is a pretty good deal. And uh, let's, uh, let's move up here. So that's basically how we moved up here. And that's, uh, my roommate was Glenn Johnstone, who still lives here in Beverly. And uh, we're still good friends. So. Oh, that's terrific. Good story. He set the wheels in motion. And you, so you mentioned you were looking for a place to start your family and all of that. Uh, tell us a little bit about, about your family and, and, and uh, what Brenda is up to these days. Well, uh, uh, does some of you know, my wife, uh, Brenda, uh, we've been married, uh, hmm, I think 35 years. So uh, we've been around for a little bit. And uh, again, we came up here, uh, we uh, had our daughter in, uh, 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 first and uh, uh, you know, she uh, right now was working at Endicott College in the, uh, the college building. And then a few later, uh, actually less than two years later, my uh, son, Zach was born. And uh, currently he's uh, living in Los Angeles and we haven't seen him through all this, but uh, what he does out there is um, uh, he breeds clownfish uh, of all the things that you could possibly think of. He's uh, like a, a fish savant. He knows how to breed the fish and uh, he really, he really knows his business. He was working for a company in Virginia and uh, the company he's working for now in Los Angeles is I think the largest in the United States. I think there's two in the world and they're trying harder. They're trying, trying to be one, but uh, he, uh, he specializes in clownfish. And for those there in TV land, that's Finding Nemo, that's a clownfish. And he's unbelievable at uh, breeding those things. Interesting, what, and what is Brenda up to these days? Murph? Uh, well, Brenda, uh, she's uh, all over the place. She's, I think she's busier than I am, but th that's fine. She's uh, currently the uh, president of Beverly Main Streets. And uh, which, ah, great. yeah, she just got on that, uh, you know, a few months ago or something like that. I don't know if uh, people are familiar with uh, the Bass and the Grass uh, uh, fish uh, art show that they just had a month and a half ago or something. She kind of came up with the idea of that. And she's, uh, you know, trying to bring some new ideas. You know, right now it's a difficult thing for, for gatherings. You know, Arts Fest was canceled and all these other events uh, were canceled because of COVID. And she's trying to come up with different things that people can, you know, what can we do socially distance to still engage, um, uh, you know, the community and let them know that, you know, Beverly's still a vibrant city despite, you know, all these restrictions. So that's what she's doing. She's also on uh, the Mass Cultural Council. Uh, she's uh, the, the Beverly Cultural Council secretary uh, what else? I think I have some notes here. Yes, I do. She's, uh, she was a, a community outreach for Endicott College for Center for the Arts. And that uh, obviously stopped uh, uh, during COVID because what they do is bring in people to Endicott College to uh, view different shows or, or art shows or, or theater or any kind of thing. So yeah, she's just, she's just busy. So, busy lady. Busy lady. Wow. I see her yeah, uh, at night and they'll go, oh yeah, that's how it works. That's how the 35 years works. Well, you guys are a busy couple. You both have a lot going on. Hey, Brian, obviously this is the Beverly Rotary Club TV show, and, and this is about Rotary to some degree. Tell us a little bit about Rotary. How did you discover Rotary, and how did you get involved in Rotary? Well, I don't know if I actually discovered Rotary. I think uh, Rotary discovered me. Uh, at the time, uh, our kids were going to uh, St. Mary's School, and uh, again, we were very involved with the parent-teacher things. Uh, anytime they had a dance, uh, they would call this one guy who always came up with these decorations. I, don't know, I think it was me. Uh, so we always did that, you know, just things like that, the floats for the, 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 uh, the, the Santa parade. You know, St. Mary's always had like a flatbed truck and, uh, you know, there'd be 40 kids on it or 50 kids, whatever. So we, we were constantly doing those things. And my friend Kevin Kelleher, who you guys probably know, and he's Nora, he asked me, you know, you're doing all this stuff for St. Mary's. Why don't you do something for the larger community? So I go, okay, great. What are you talking about? And he said the Rotary Club. And to be honest, when he first said Rotary Club, 
I had no idea what it was. I thought it was like the Flintstones with the buffalo hats and the secret <laughs> handshake and some sort. I go, what's the Rotary Club? I have no idea. And uh, at the time, uh, the Rotary Club was meeting at the old King's Grant on, on 128. Uh, so the first meeting I went to, uh, I walk in and again, I was supposed to meet Kevin there. So I didn't know anyone. Well, I didn't think I'd know anyone there. I come walking in and uh, our friend Rick Mooney is at the table, you know, taking names for people coming in. I go, hey, Rick, how you doing? And then I turn, there's another person, another, I knew probably a dozen people in the first meeting I went to. And I was like, I didn't know you were in the Rotary. And again, I think it was a secret club or something. And uh, <laughs> so I, I just, um, you know, I started going to meetings after that. And it was a little bit of a, uh, um, I, I guess, uh, you know, we go to different, you know, lunches and then, you know, the people kind of vet you to see if you were okay for the Rotary Club. And I did meet one person who uh, asked, well, what do you do for a living? And I said, um, oh, I'm a graphic designer. And he, you know, he didn't waste a second. He goes, you make any money? <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that was pretty funny. But uh, uh, it was just, um, it was, it was a, an interesting group. And I, I had fun going to the meetings and I thought it was uh, interesting. I, I think I was, I think I was actually formally inducted either the week or two weeks before 9-11. So wow. uh, and maybe that was a retaliation for me. I don't know, uh, but uh, whatever. I don't know. But I have, I've been a member now for obviously 20 or so years now. So good. Well, Brian, tell us some of the highlights of your career in Rotary. I know you were president one year, but you've you've done a lot of things in Rotary. What are some of the things that really stand out over the years that uh, you've enjoyed or that you think are noteworthy? Well, well, the, first of all, I, I was honored to be uh, asked to be a president. Uh, it's not a, a, a vote or whatever. Uh, people select and they say who might be a good president. And uh, I was honored to be a president in uh, 2013, 2014. And uh, obviously, you know, they were trying to fill a gap between good presidents. And I, I took that space and, you know, gladly served as a, a president for a year. So, uh, but um, a lot of things that I do are the, uh, I guess, on the communications part. Uh, I send out communications to the club uh, letting them know information, good or bad, uh, but also the events that are going on. Uh, I work, I, I, I maintain the website for the club, uh, which is at uh, www.beverlyrotaryclub.com, uh, uh, but also do a newsletter for the, uh, the club every week. And uh, I've been doing that for over 10 years now, can you believe it? And, uh, you know, so it's based, I guess, on the National Enquirer or something like that. It's a little bit of reverend. It does have... Um, uh, it does have uh, news in it, but I also add my own little twists and twer you know, quirky things just to make it more entertaining. And uh, I'm finding out that people have actually read this thing. So, so that's kind of a fun thing. Some of the uh, activities I've been, uh, again, any event that we've had over the last 20 years I've been involved in, uh, whether coming up with graphics or logos for the event, because uh, that's my expertise and um, you know, doing those kind of things. But I've also been involved a lot with the, uh, the Rotary Garden, which is over by the Montserrat train station. Uh, I took over for uh, Neil and Douglas and Jim Davies who did it for years. And now it's turning, I'm turning into it two years now. I think I've been doing about eight or nine years now or something like that. And again, it's a nice, it's a way for the community to see what Rotary's doing. It's just a, a simple thing, you know, even uh, beginning of this year when we planted a bunch of flowers and this was again in the height of all the um, of the COVID-19 things and restrictions. This was, I think, I want to say April or something like that. We had a small team of people come down with, with masks, planting things, and people were so happy that we were uh, planting flowers and things and doing something. It was it's great. You know, they're honking the horns. You think, oh, they're honking at me. No, no, they're not honking at me. They're honking at the, the, the beautiful garden that's out there. Uh, so, so uh, that's, uh, you know, those are some of the things. I also, um, uh, the pitcher for the softball team, uh, which is a fun thing. Right. And an interesting fact, I've always pitched softball. I won the championship in elementary school. I won it in high school. I won it in college. It still is eluding me in the Beverly Rotary Club. <laughs> Not yet. I, it, and all I can think of, there's a consistent pattern for me so it can't be the pitching, maybe it's the team, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna throw anyone under the bus, so. Exactly right. Well, you know what, Brian, a couple of things. First of all, your year as president, I remember very well, was a very productive uh, year, which certainly was a very creative year. Uh, and we had a good growth, uh, growth year that year as well. You did a wonderful job as president leading our group. 
And, and I know I'm speaking for every member of the Beverly Rotary Club and saying we're lucky to have you. But um, let's just uh, kind of take a real quick break right here, folks, and uh, watch a, a quick video about our club and some of the things that we're doing. And uh, we'll see you in a, in a couple of minutes. We raise a lot of money for Beverly Organization. And they bought us our refrigerated van. They made a significant contribution to the restoration of Ellis Square. They helped us house a family experiencing homelessness. They bought us our bookmobile. They were actually the first ones to donate instruments to the high school band. They bought oxygen masks for our rescue dogs. They helped buy our school bus. They fund the annual Bradgate Ice Cream Social at Lynch Park every summer, and they even scoop the ice cream. Since 2014, they've supported the Cabot, funding preservation of this historic gem. They helped to fund the Council on Aging Van. They were a major donor to our new infant toddler playground. They bought an emergency generator for Harbor Lighthouse. We funded and built the gazebo. And we've got a green thumb. A lot of green thumbs. A lot of green thumbs. Not to mention sculptures. We planted more than 100 trees last year. They donated a shuttle bus stop that brings veterans to the VA hospital in Bedford. We're going to buy a water drone to clean plastics out of Beverly Harbor. They make a big difference for United Way. We give up to eight scholarships. Eight scholarships every year since the mid-1980s. And I was a recipient, and thanks to their help, I was the first in my family to go to college. And welcome back, everybody. Uh, we are here today with our my co-host, Mike Harrington, and our very distinguished guest, Mr. Brian Murphy, uh, who is quite a, quite a guy, quite a creative guy. If you've uh, had a chance to see the first half of our show, you'll know exactly what I mean. Uh, but we've got a lot more questions for you, Murph, and, and I'm going to kick it off with, uh, with asking you, you're, you're pretty active with St. Vincent de Paul. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, Al, I can. Uh, St. Vincent de Paul, is a, it's based out of St. Mary's Church. Uh, the, our chapter the, that I'm a member of or actually president of, but there's also a St. Vincent de Paul out of uh, St. John's Church. They're both in the Catholic collaborative, but they serve different areas. Our area serves mostly the downtown area and they serve, uh, you know, North, uh, like North Beverly and, and things like that. And it's been uh, in the church, well, it's, it's been around since the 1850s, started in France, but here in Beverly, it's been around for, I think about 78 or 79 years. And basically what they do is they, uh, they help people who need basic need things, such as uh, rent, food, medicine, help with electric, help with gas, and any other, you know, many different things that we do. So that's one part of it. Uh, and again, I've been president of that for, uh, well, I was president for seven years, took a couple year break, and now I'm president again. Uh, and, and again, I find it very rewarding to help uh, the people who are most at need in our community. And that's, that's, that's one part of it. There's another part that we do, it's a, a Friday night dinner. We do a Friday night dinner on the fourth Friday of every month at uh, St. Peter's Church on Ocean Street. And uh, basically before COVID, it was really kind of a, a social gathering kind of thing. Like the, we you kind of get the regular people that would come in every month at that time. And there could be anywhere from say 25 to 40 people coming in for a free dinner. And you can get a free, you know, if, if you're in need of food, you can get a free dinner every night of the week, except Saturday night in Beverly. You know, wow. I know Beverly Bootstraps has a, uh, uh, on their website, has a uh, listing that shows where they are. And most of them are centered downtown. So it was a nice social gathering for people to come and, and have a dinner and things like that. And I think part of what uh, people think is, oh, it's a bunch of homeless people. Well, it's not. It's people who are, um, uh, they don't make enough money. That's basically what it is. So, you know, if they can get a, a dinner that doesn't cost anything, that saves them money to go towards a rent or, or whatever other thing they do. So, and it's a good a group of people that, um, you know, come in every month. And like I said, it used to be a very social thing. Right now it's, it's purely takeout. We make uh, 40 dinners and we put them in bags and we, you know, the people come to the back door at the church and we, we hand them out again, socially distance wise. And, and that's, uh, that's what it is. I have a, a team of people who help and they kind of alternate a lot and they, um, uh, basically, you know, people help maybe a couple times a year, which is great. So if we have, you know, 15 people that are helping, it spreads it out and, and people don't have to do it much. So I'm the head chef, uh, believe it or not. And uh, I've been told my meatloaf is the best in town. I don't know if uh, Paul Guancy would agree, but uh, who knows? But uh, uh, people look forward to the meatloaf. Now in the summer, we do a different dinner because it's too hot to be cooking a meatloaf in the summer. 
so they look forward to the colder months and, and that's uh that's what it is but it's a it's a it's a i think a very rewarding thing uh to help the people and uh and people are very grateful uh to get a, a dinner from us and there's a, many other organizations that take different nights and, and, and times and stuff but it, it's really i find a very rewarding thing Brian, it sounds like a great organization. They're doing really super work. Hey, you mentioned COVID. I mean, obviously we're still in the midst of COVID. It's very, been a very challenging time for families, for individuals, for businesses. Tell us about your situation. How are you and your family coping and how has it affected other things you're doing? Well, uh, I think, you know, I, I, I'm an artist and basically I work by myself. So, uh, and I've been doing that for about 35 years. So when everyone had to start working from home to me, and it wasn't that big of a change. I mean, I couldn't go out in the middle of the day and do things, but uh, uh, being used to working out of the home, I've been doing that for a long time. And you know, to the point where I'm disciplined enough, people go, how do you work at home? Aren't you watching TV? No, I'm not watching TV, I'm working. Just like you go to an office and work, I'm working here. When my day's over, then I'll do something else. But you get a lot done because there's no commuting time. There's no talking around the water bubbler. There's nothing. Uh, a good thing I have I have been able to spend all this time with Brenda, because you know she's out or whatever. Now we're both in the house, so that's it. We're not driving each other crazy. At least from my end, uh, I might be doing it the other way around. And uh, it's it's making some changes. Um, you know, like I said, uh, you don't go to meetings. You're on uh, you know whether you're on a Zoom meeting, but I sometimes I like just to have an old fashioned conference call. I don't, you know, I like seeing people, but sometimes you don't need to do a whole Zoom thing to uh, talk. You could get, get the conference call and still get it done. Uh, you know, you have a job, you get it done, and that's it. And again, with all the technology today, you, you do the artwork, send it off to someone, they approve it or disapprove it, whatever, and still tweak it. But again, you don't have to literally meet people anymore. And, uh, and so that works out good. And I, I've, been, I've been pretty busy. Um, you know, I, I got a, a few new accounts uh, this year. And then my existing uh, clients have been giving me a plenty of work. So it has been actually pretty good for me. I don't know why. It's, it's an odd thing. Well, I'm glad you and your family are staying healthy. It's been such a hard time for so many people. But uh, the fact you were already working at home, you probably were, were halfway there. Hey, you've had a lot of kind of cool life experience along the way. Some things you've shared with Al and I and other friends. But would you like to share with some of our viewers just some of the kind of cool things you've done over the years that are kind of funky and interesting, things you've really enjoyed? Well, there's a lot of things. I don't know. I mean, I look, I go, geez, I don't know. I don't know that's crazy, but some people go, that's crazy. Uh, I know for my 50th birthday, my brother and I jumped out of an airplane. Uh, I talked him into it. I was already going to do it. I said, hey, you want to you want to jump out of an airplane? He's like, OK, sure. So uh, we did that up in uh, Pepperell or, or Peppermill, whatever, the town up in Massachusetts. So that was kind of an odd thing. Uh, I, I, maybe 20, 25 years ago, I started riding a bike. Uh, just for my health and just to do something. And um, at one point I uh, rode every street in Beverly just to see if I can do it. And then after I did that, I started uh, riding my bike from Beverly to every town in Essex County. Uh, and then after that, I said, well, let me try uh, riding to uh, Maine. So uh, I rode to Kittery, Maine on a mountain bike, not a fast bike, a mountain Ouch. bike. Uh, and Al's a bike rider. Uh, but I have uh, legs of steel, and uh, it was a it was a, a good experience. I did that for my birthday uh, one year, and stopped at the uh, Kittery uh, Post Office to have them stamp a letter just to prove that I actually did uh, go to Maine. So that was uh, I think a hundred miles on a mountain bike, which is that's something different. So wow, uh, wow. Uh, well, that's the Irish way of doing things. You know, never do it the easy way. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I, do it the, like, the difficult way. Yeah, if I really wanted to do it the Irish way, I would have put 20 pound weights on it as well. So, to make it really yeah. so uh, during COVID, um, uh, you know, Brenda and I, you know, at, at one point, this was, I think, near the end of March, we started going, you know, we're taking walks and just going just to get out, just to, you know, just by ourselves. And, uh, and we go, you know what? We've already walked a bunch of streets. So what we started doing was walking every street in Beverly. So we did that. Uh, during COVID, and we started, like I said, probably the beginning, or not the beginning, the end of March, and uh, by, I think about right around 4th of July, we were done with every street in Beverly. We kept a map, and we, we'd mark off areas and stuff, and it was uh, actually pretty, it was pretty interesting. I've done it on a bike, and it's a lot faster on a bike, but when you're walking, you really get to see neighborhoods, and get to see uh, 
you know, the differences in the neighborhoods and there's all great neighborhoods. There are, you know, a lot of fun looking neighborhoods and interesting houses and, and just things. We saw more wildlife walking around. It was just, you know, we, we were one of those lucky people who saw the fox running downtown one day. This is the middle of the day. We said, what is this? This is just kind of a funny thing. And, and a lot of big deer out in the farms and just, just a kind of a fun thing. But it was nice to just walk around. When we did see people, we just, how you doing? And they would go, who are you? Because we're all wearing masks. <laughs> oh, it doesn't matter. We're just saying hi. So it was funny. Oh, great That's stuff. Interesting. interesting. Rick, tell us a little bit about your business. Um, you know, kind of give us an idea as to as to really what you do to to, to generate income and, and who is a customer for you? Well, uh, you know, I, like you said, I've been self-employed for over 35 years now. And uh, uh, I've worked with uh, clients from, uh, you know, television shows. I did some... <laughs> I did some uh, things with Geraldo Rivera way back in the day and wow. uh, Jerry Springer. Well, that was a beautiful thing. <laughs> so it's just kind of a funny thing. But uh, uh, right now uh, I'm focusing more on uh, print artwork, which is, uh, you know, things that you would get, um, uh, you know, annual reports, logos, brochures, flyers, anything that, you know, falls into that to promote a business or a product or anything along that line. Uh, I used to do a, 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 like maybe half and half TV and print. Uh, and then I got out of the, the TV part because it always had, uh, you know, a 500 people on a set doing something. And I wanted to just be the one doing things. So, uh, and other clients like around here, I've done plenty of work for Harbor Lake Community Partners. I've done, you know, their logo for them. Uh, I also did the Cabot Theater's uh, 99th logo last year and a whole package uh, to uh, promote, you know, their 99th year in, in, in business. And um, uh, I just, anywhere, you know, people go, have you ever worked in food? Yes, I've done food products. Have you ever done a high tech? Yes, I've done high tech. So it's just all over the place. Uh, and, and like every day is a different thing. I don't know what I'm going to have. You know, maybe I'll be working on maps for a travel agency. And then in the afternoon, I'm working on like high tech stuff that for robotics, I have no idea what they even do but I make it look good. <laughs> so. You certainly do. And I, and I want our viewers to know that uh, right up on my wall there, you'll see a picture of a painting of Fenway Park, which uh, Murph did for me. And um, it's very personalized. It's hard to see that here, but it's very personalized with my company logo, my kids' names, my grandchildren's names are in there. So just a wonderful piece. And I, I share that with as many people as I can. So tell us. Well, hold on you, now. Thanks for the plug, and there'll be a check in your envelope at the end of the week. So, <laughs> <laughs> but, but. tell us if you would, Murph. So, so you obviously are doing some fine art. You're also doing a lot of commercial work, and how do you how do you balance all of that? Well, it, well, it, well. I, I've primarily done commercial work uh, my whole career. I've always, uh, let's say, dabbled in fine arts. Uh, but like many things in the fine arts, whether you're a, a musician or a writer or uh, you know, a, an artist and, uh, of any sort, uh, maybe not the greatest career choice uh, to make money. So I did the commercial work uh, for whatever reason, because it, it, it came easy to me and I knew what I was doing, but also it paid the bills every week, uh, was able to take care of my family and you know, raise the two kids. So, but my kids are grown now and off doing their own jobs now. So that kind of freed up a lot of my time. So I've been spending more and more time doing the fine arts work and that I find that extremely rewarding. Uh, you know, maybe it's, I'm a late bloomer, uh, but again, I spent all the time taking care of my family and making sure they were set, but now they're all grown and I don't have those things anyway. They're not living at home. I don't have to take care of them. I have to watch their soccer games or whatever, maybe the grandchildren someday, who knows, but, but uh, I find uh, that then I have more time to do my own finance and it's just flowing out of me, especially during COVID. It's just flowing out. There's just things yeah. to do. So the wall behind me is a bunch of paintings that were done, uh, you know, in, over the past year and stuff. And that's just, you know, six there. I have another probably hundred uh, laying around. And how I balance it was I still, I still kind of keep in my head during like business hour days, like you know, whatever, eight to five, nine to five, whatever you want to do. That's the commercial art. That's when I do, uh, you know, all the kind of things that, you know, th that I'm doing for regular work. And at night, that's when I work on my fine arts thing. I don't have any distractions. I have kind of, I have a, 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 like, an, a, like a studio in my garage, which 
will never hold a car and anything else because there's stuff all over the place, but also a studio in my basement. And either one of those places I go there, it's kind of my sanctuary. And I go there and paint or sculpt or draw or whatever for a few hours at least every day. And on the weekends, that might put in eight or nine hours or something like that. It's a discipline that I've gotten into. And this is you know going over a couple of years now. Uh, so really getting in, more involved in that, which I find very rewarding. And it's also uh, turning into a thing. Like you said, Al, I did the painting for you. I've done a, a number of commissions and these are all over COVID. And, uh, but also uh, regular artwork's been selling pretty well. I'm showing in a couple of galleries up in uh, Rockport right now. Uh, there's a, I have three pieces at the Rocky Neck Art Colony and uh, trying to get some things in the Marblehead Art Association too. So I'm kind of spreading all over the place. Plus uh, people can just contact me directly and say, hey, is that thing for sale? It sure is, everything well, for sale. You know what, you're leading me to my next question. If somebody did want to purchase something from you, how do they do that? Well, I have a website so people can look at uh, uh, the, the various different kind of artwork I do on there. Then again, there's a lot of different things. There's paintings, there's sculptures, uh, just all kinds of different things. Again, it's it's like uh, you know my commercial work. I don't know what I'm going to do next, and just I get an idea. This is perfect. I'll go do this, and, and you know, and I'll get to the painting later. I'll get to the sculpture later. It doesn't matter. It's just constantly creating things and doing things. What's uh, that site address, Murph? My, my website is uh, www.brianmurphyartanddesign.com. It's long, but once you go in there, then it's, you don't have to do it again. So, right, right. Uh, but there's a section there of, of fine arts, uh, which shows things that there's paintings. Uh, I've, I've done like these eclectic fish uh, sculptures. I've done some portraits of uh, people that are more like mosaic things. And also uh, I was doing a bunch of birdhouse things that are just Again, they're from found objects. I'm, uh, you know, I'm walking around the street and I see someone throwing out the things in their uh, trash and it's a perfect piece of wood for something. And I'll take it and I'll repurpose it for something else, so. Hey, Brian, we, we, we carved out a couple of minutes right here at the end of the show, just to show some, uh, a few things to our viewers at home about some of the projects you've worked on. If you just wanna take a couple of minutes here and share your screen and just show a few of these items, that could be kind of fun for everybody at home. Sure, Mike, let me... Uh... Take a second and hopefully I can get it right here. Who's that handsome guy? Well, that that uh, I, I have been growing my hair longer over COVID and, and my uh, Brenda is actually giving me an end date. Uh, she said, it's gotta be cut by Chinese New Year, which is February 13th next year. I don't think it's gonna go that long because that's what it is. But this is just proof that yes, my hair was long at one, but it was much more luxurious at that time. But uh, <laughs> yeah. that's, that's it's kind of the it. Bruce Jenner look from back in the day. <laughs> or my grandmother thought I looked like George Brett. So, uh, <laughs> so that's it. This is um, uh, the Rotary Garden Crew, one of the garden crews. And this was uh, from the spring when we planted things. Uh, you can't tell behind the mask, but it's uh, former Mayor Bill Scanlon, his wife Louise, Anna Langstaff from the uh, uh, library. Uh, Mark Brislin, who was up at Landmark School, and Scott Doherty, a, a business owner here in town. So those are some of the things. And, you know, this is, again, part of the uh, garden that we have. And again, very um, uh, visible uh, 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 intersection and uh, plenty of people go in and out of that place. And uh, it just, it, it's, a, it's a great thing for people to see something and the beauty in town here. And it's just kind of a nice thing. Uh, I did mention I am the pitcher for the softball team. And, and uh, sometimes I... <laughs> <laughs> trying to intimidate the other teams by maybe doing something a little bit odd to throw them off, but it hasn't really worked out uh, as well as they thought. <laughs> so uh, another thing, again, we mentioned the St. Vincent de Paul things. Uh, this is uh, uh, one of our things where we made a bunch of meatloafs. And uh, again, St. Peter's has a great kitchen there. So we do all the cooking right there. This is obviously before COVID and obviously before I had long hair, but uh, that's what it is. And one of the signature things of my cooking is uh, I wear my pink poodle apron. <laughs> so, uh, it, 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 uh, if nothing else, it uh, will um, uh, kind of make people go, what's with that? So I, I just think it's kind of a funny thing. Um, That's funny. Some of the, uh, well, one of the, actually, you mentioned a little bit earlier, Mike, uh, some of the projects I've worked on. One of the things, you know, around the downtown area, they had barriers uh, that, you know, cement Jersey barriers that they wanted painted. Uh, this is the, the ones that I did for uh, the uh, Indo Pub, and uh, it's off of the side street on West Dane Street, but uh, there were six barriers, 
And the idea behind this was, again, I mentioned earlier, was all the animals that were roaming around uh, Beverly. And, and this kind of uh, reflects a lot of the animals that we saw. There's the fox in there and, and, and rabbits. You know, rabbits have been coming into my yard. I have two dogs and the rabbits didn't care anymore. They just care less. Uh, and plenty of deer and, and other things. So this was kind of a, you know, wild, where the wild things are. So uh, that's it. Uh, a couple of pictures here are some fish uh, or sculptures. This is a, 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 a sculpture of one of the fish I have. This is about, I wanna say about, about three feet long or something like that. And all the artwork always has a story of something. And uh, if you're familiar with the show, uh, the TV show on uh, National Geographic, Wicked Tuna, uh, one of the captains, Dave Marciano lives here in Beverly and his wife cuts my hair before now. But uh, uh, one time she said, you know what? Dave's got all these extra lures and things. Do you want them? Oh, yes, I do. So that's what all the, uh, the lures are. They're made of different lures that he had, and they make up the body of the fish with the, the reel for the eye and all those kind of things, and a fishing rod for kind of the, um, the veins. Uh, another, another fish I have is this one, which is um, the story behind this one. This one's called uh, You Should See the Other Guy. And the name of that is because at the, the lower part of the, the fish, you see that metal thing? That's a bayonet from, a, a, from a, a friend's grandfather in World War II, and it's, it's broken in the middle. <laughs> so, so that's where kind of the name is, you should see the other guy. Because <laughs> so, I don't know how it broke. <laughs> so so uh, that's a, some example of some of the fish. Uh, the paintings that I do are, uh, a lot of them are like North Shore scenes. If you, you live up here in Beverly or Salem, you'll be familiar with, this is the, the Beverly Salem Bridge. And um, I started doing this, at one point, and uh, I had a really, um, more like a normal sky. And I go, no, nah, that's just not working. So then I, I made it nuclear. It looks like, you know, the world's on fire. And it was just so much better to me. It was such, such a better way to look at it. I love this painting. This is actually in a, a show at uh, Porter Mills on uh, Rantoul Street right now. Uh, another painting is uh, this one here. Again, as I mentioned, there's stories for everything. This is a house on Federal Street. And uh, I don't know the name of it, but I thought it's, it's a great um, subject to paint. And the, the reason I painted it, uh, my wife Brenda was uh, meeting a friend who actually lives across the street, but she had the address wrong. So she walked into this house and she's like, this can't be her house. And she started asking people and they go, oh, she doesn't live here. So that's the name of this one. Jamie doesn't live here. <laughs> And, uh, you know, the people who are familiar walking down um, uh, Lothrop Street will, will see this view from Dane Street Beach. Uh, again, these are just uh, paintings that are, um, uh, you know, that I did. I like, the, the, you know, the different uh, uh, locations and, and things along that line. Uh, I mentioned I did like mosaic uh, sculptures. This is one. Uh, this is my wife, Bri uh, Brenda, actually. And uh, these are made of just uh, found objects, found wood. There's a uh, beach glass, you know, that's off on the left-hand side and also uh, sand from Crane's Beach. Don't tell them, they'll be mad I took sand from Crane's Beach. But, uh, you know, it just, it's, it's all these different found objects that are uh, made of it. And I have a couple other ones too. Uh, you may be familiar with uh, Andrew DeFranza who uh, runs Harbor Lake Community Partners. And uh, this piece again is found objects. And, uh, but his hat, which he always wears is made of uh, roof shingles. And, you know, the, the looks like the epaulettes on his collar there, those are from gutters. And, uh, you know, so it's just found objects from everywhere. And I kind of put them together in this, these different um, uh, positions. Uh, I mentioned birdhouse. This is, you know, they're not your typical birdhouse things. It's uh, just a bunch of different found object things. And I kind of put them in together. This is made from, um, uh, actually, this one's called Hansel and Gretel, because it looks like a Hansel and Gretel cottage to me but uh, it's made of uh, found objects, uh, the metals, roofing things, the little uh, hooks there on the front, those are like boat sailing hooks. So uh, those are just, uh, you know, they're just a sample of a, a few things that I've done um, artwork wise and, and that's what I do, so. Well, thank you so much, amazing stuff. You're such a creative guy and uh, I'm glad we were able to visually share with everybody at home some of the really cool projects you've worked on. It looks like during COVID here, the the, the, the creative juices are flowing, so. Um, yeah, well, there's not much else to do. When people go, geez, there's nothing to do. There's plenty to do. I wish I had more time. I wish I could figure out how not to sleep. But, 
you know, it, it's just, a, yeah, it, it's, um, I know at the beginning of this, uh, you know, all this COVID things, it, you, you didn't know what was going to happen. And I was thinking, I just want to be productive. That's it. Uh, you know, if I go in two weeks, what did he do? Well, I was watching reruns of something or binge watching a show or I'm doing artwork. I'd rather do the artwork. And so I'm still doing that. So that's it. Well, thank you so much, Brian. And we thank everybody at home for joining, uh, joining our episode this week of Around Town with Rotary. Our guest has been Brian Murphy. He talked about his website. Go visit and learn a little bit more about his, about his art. But Al Temkin, great to see you today. Brian Murphy, thanks again. Terrific show. And, and everybody stay safe during COVID. And we'll see you all again really soon. So I, I wanted to add one thing, if I could, Mike. Sure. I did say about my hair. My hair is longer. You can see it. It's much longer. And my idea is to have a fundraiser. If you want to cut my hair, we'll have an auction and say, whoever has the highest bidder can shave my head and I can start from scratch again. So maybe that's something we do uh, uh, in a month or two or something, or maybe two months, who knows, depending on how long it goes. So that could I be something it. I love it. for Rotary. Well, let's write that idea down. Okay, gentlemen. Hey, great to see you both. Stay safe and uh, viewers at home, you stay safe as well. We'll see you all soon. Okay, thanks. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.